Howdy y'all, I am Ice Gold, and ever since February 2022, when Russia first invaded Ukraine, the US has been sending billions of dollars in military aid to Ukraine. And in a time where inflation was rapidly rising and there was a lot of scrutiny on what was happening at the southern border, many Americans saw our government sending aid to Ukraine as silly and unimportant because why should we care more about a war in Eastern Europe when we've got problems at home? Now, these are valid concerns, but the war in Ukraine is actually quite a bit more important than a lot of people really think. Inflation got addressed that year, but a price gouging bill died in the Senate committee that year, so prices are still high, yay! And the issues at the border are still regrettably ongoing, but, and this may piss some of y'all off, <laughs> I personally think deterring Russia from starting World War III is good. I want to make this part crystal clear. The only reason World War III has not already started is because Ukraine has not fallen after two and some years. Everyone who's taken a world history class will know this, but after the fall of Nazi Germany in 1945, a lot of Eastern Europe was given to the USSR, a valuable member of the Allies back then to keep an eye on so as to avoid another Nazi state doing what Germany did and, you know, killing millions of innocent Jews. During this time, the USSR had its share issues, but Eastern Europe was a lot better for many farming industries, among plenty of others, than Russia's extensive tundra, which we all know they've gotten excess of. So, the USSR falls in the early 90s. Eastern Europe goes back to being Eastern Europe with Poland, Hungary, the Baltics, etc. But Ukraine was then formed as well. And ever since, Russia has wanted Ukrainian land back above anything else. And the offensive launched in 2022 has been their biggest attempt so far at getting that. Mark my words though, if Ukraine falls, Russia is not going to stop at annexing Ukraine. They will attack Poland in due time, or the Baltics, or wherever. But the main thing that matters here is if they attack a country that's part of NATO. And NATO is basically this big North Atlantic trade organization arrangement thing where there's like a ton of countries that are members and we all work together type thing. The point I'm trying to make here is there's a bunch of articles in NATO's agreement and the fifth one pretty much says if you attack one of us, the rest of us declare war on you. You see where this is going. In November of 2022, a couple Russian missiles accidentally hit a small farm in southeastern Poland, right next to the Ukrainian border. Poland is part of NATO, so <laughs> naturally, everyone was freaking out because if NATO decided to invoke Article 5, World War 3 would have started, and we're all very lucky that clear heads prevailed and Article 5 was not invoked. All I'm saying, these are the stakes we're talking about if Ukraine falls. Putin will stop at nothing to get the Iron Curtain back, but he somewhat understands the risks associated with attacking NATO countries, which is why he hasn't gone for others, like, as in, he hasn't gone for the Baltics yet, despite them being arguably easier targets than Ukraine. He's got a powerful, quote-unquote, ally in China, but even the Chinese government does not support Putin's invasion of Ukraine, so... Trouble of paradise, I suppose. That's good for us, though, because it does seem like China does not want to go to war with NATO while Russia keeps throwing their armies at Ukraine without a care in the world. There is a point to be made about how botched the whole operation was. I mean, Putin was saying Russia was going to take over Ukraine in a matter of 48 hours, but eh, here we are, well over two years later, and he still hasn't captured Kiev. So, yes, America sending Ukraine aid is a good thing. Russia is our enemy at present, and Vladimir Putin has not shown himself to be interested in stopping with Ukraine. I think it's very good that we, as well as many other members of NATO, have actively been deterring Putin's crazed idea of rebuilding the Iron Curtain by sending Ukraine military aid. Truthfully, I honestly doubt Ukraine could win a long-term war just due to the sheer numbers Russia has over them, and a war of attrition isn't going to be good for anyone outside of Russia. I mean. Well, it's definitely still hurt Russia, but as long as Ukraine holds out and keeps the Russians from advancing, I think that's worth sending dozens of billions of dollars for. I mean, maybe that's all I'd pay, but anyway, it hurts Russia and gives everyone more leverage over them, you know, Europe, us in America, like NATO in general, which could lead to negotiations being reopened and potentially forcing Russia out of Ukraine. That's the best possible outcome. They've burned all this time and money on a failed invasion of a country much smaller than theirs just to get told to stay out or the cost of such a war keep climbing. All without having to send any troops over there. There is one big thing happening later this year that could prolong Russia's invasion. The November election. 
And it's no secret that under Biden, we've been sending Ukraine billions in aid, like I think almost 100 billion at this point. But had this invasion happened under Trump, Ukraine would have fallen a long time ago. Trump has been friendly with Putin for the longest time, like even during his presidency he was, and it's not hard to imagine that he'd want to be allies with someone who he considers to be similar to him in that they're both authoritarian right-wing leaders. And what I think will happen if Trump wins in November is, he'll pull America out of NATO and then directly assist Russia with their effort in Ukraine. He might say Russia aid, that type of deal. And he said before that he'd put an end to the war in less than a day. But you don't have to be Einstein to know that he means giving Russia the bump they need to actually finally win the war, and quickly at that. He knows about NATO, though, and he has wanted to pull us out of it before, and if he gets America out of NATO, he can help Russia win in Ukraine and let them run free in Eastern Europe without any Article 5 consequences happening here at home. He would let World War III happen, but he'd try to get us out of it first, which never talked about how America has done and staying out of the last two world wars. World War III would suck ass anyway for everyone worldwide. We'd be sitting idly by while Russia attempts to reclaim Eastern Europe and thousands of lives would be lost. And economies all over the planet would get thrown way off. We'd be thrown into a timeline where all this death and destruction is happening and the world would view the United States of America as partially responsible. I mean, we'd be bystanders. We wouldn't be helping aside standing against Vladimir Putin. And ever since World War II, we've been viewed as the leaders of the free world. And even though that's been slipping a bit lately, it's still expected of us, not, you know, an able people like Vladimir Putin. This year's election is important for a number of reasons, and I think keeping World War III from starting should rank in everyone's top three reasons to go vote this year. If it were me, I'd want to vote for the candidate who's been playing and will continue playing 4D chess with, as it stands, the baddest man on the planet, but to each their own. <laughs> I know, Trump's base oddly wants all that I've said about World War III starting. Couldn't tell you why, but they're truly an enigma, aren't they, team? And sure, we've got problems at home to worry about too, but we really should make it a thing to hate our government for helping Ukraine tell Russia to shove it. We aren't sending troops, just weapons and artillery, which in turn increases opportunities at home because we've got people in factories making all this stuff too. And in my humble opinion, I think it's a good thing that we have not sent troops to Eastern Europe, and I'd really prefer it if we didn't have to get roped into doing that by Article 5. But maybe that's a hot take. <laughs> Who can really say? Maybe it is. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that we're sending Ukraine aid, but I hope this video clears a little bit of that up. So thank you all for watching. I have been Ice Gold. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave like 50 comments for the algorithm. My Discord is down in the description if you want to chat with me some more. And I will see y'all later.